unknowingly because you end up have to pay all those large medical bills. But today, my brothers and sisters, I want to invite you to be debt free. How would you like to be debt free? You know, one of the most important things for us to recognize is that debt is both earthly and heavenly. And the only way that we can debt free is that we recognize first and foremost that everything that we have come from God. Everything that we have come from God. I want to share with you a scripture today. And a scripture today. To talk about how much do we owe God. It's from 1 Corinthians 4 verses 7. It said, For what gave you the right to make such a judgment? What do you add that God hasn't given to you? And if everything you have is from God, why do you boast as though it was a gift? So you see, my brothers and sisters, we all are in debt. We are either in debt to God or we are in debt to our creditor. But the scripture tell me that God poured everything on us, a gift so that we can be free. Not just free from sin, but free from earthly debt. So how would you like to be debt free? I'm praying that you want to do that today. I'm praying that you will move your life to seek the freedom from debt. And as we do that, I want to go to the scripture to tell you how to become debt free. And here is the scripture that I'm going to be using today. The scripture is coming from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. All right. And this is a parable that Jesus shared. This is a parable that Jesus shared. Let me read it for you. We're going to use this parable to help us to become debt free. All right. And so here we go. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 to 13 said, Jesus told a story to his disciple. He said there was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affair. One day a report came that the manager was wasting the employee money. So the employee called him in and said, What did this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. So the manager thought to himself, Now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig dishes, and I am too proud to beg. Ah, I know how to ensure that I have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I am fired. So, he invited each person who owed money to his employee to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe? The man reply, reply, I owe him 800 gallon of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400. And how much do you owe my employee? He asked the next man. I owe him 1,000 bushel of wheat, was the reply. Here, the manager said, take the bill and quickly change it to 800. Then the rich man had to admire this honest rapture for being so screwed. And it is true that the children of this world are more skewed in dealing with the world around them than our children of the light. So here is the lesson. Use your worldly resource to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possession is gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, then you will be faithful in large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with great responsibility. And if you're untrustworthy with worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches in heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? And no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the others. You will be devoted to one and despite the others. You cannot serve God and be enslaved by money. I see my brothers and sisters, today I want to talk to you again on the topic, becoming debt free. Becoming debt free. And the first thing I notice in the scripture, in order for us to become debt free. We have to pay off all our debt. Yes. Debt is never going to magically disappear. 
It's not going to just decide it. Your dep is not just going to decide, I like that girl or I like that guy. So let me leave them alone and move away. No, your ma your dep is not going to magically disappear. Instead, you have to take the time and effort to pay them. Even the school that manager knows that. He, here, he called all the people who owe his master. And what did he do? He didn't magically disappear their debt. No. What he did was reduce their debt. He allowed them to pay a lot less than they originally owed, but he still has to pay that full amount. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we may feel that we have a debt and all we want is for that debt to go away. I can feel and understand, you know, the recent controversy of how we are going to get our students' loan debt to go away. Everybody wants that, right? But then there are also people who have already gone through paying off that debt. And they don't think it's fair for somebody who never make an effort to go away. But my brothers and sisters, it's not our responsibility to determine what somebody else do or not do. But yet for all, it would be really nice that all of us be free from our students' loan debt. Amen? But how did we get that debt in the first place? How did we become to have students loan debt? You know, sometimes I have students loan debt. And I know the reason why I have that. It's because at the time when I was going to college, I did not have much trust in God. No, I did not have much trust in God because I depended on grants and money from the government to pay for my college. Now, if I come to God and ask God, should I go to college, where I go to college, and what should I study, I am sure my Heavenly Father would have provided for us. So most of us have debt because of our lack of trust in God. But we still have to pay those debts. We still have to make every effort to cover them in order for us to be debt-free on this world. And I know it's hard to be debt-free, but it's not impossible. You see, my brothers and sisters, in order for us to be debt-free, we have to make the effort to pay off our debt. And sometimes we sit back and we don't even think about some of the debt that we have because it's too much for us to manage. But here is the best way for you to pay off your debt. You can get all your debt, put them on a the paper in front of you, and ask God to help you to become debt-free. You not only have to pay off all your debt, but you paid it off with the help of your Heavenly Father. And so, yeah, the first step for us that this Bible teaches us is that in order for us to be free from debt, we have to take the responsibility to pay it off. We must make the effort to pay it off. And, you know, early debt can come upon us unknowingly, unknowingly, because there are good debt and there are bad debts. Yes. Say, for example, there are bad debts or credit card. We go and we open a credit card to pay for something, and it feels so easy. But when we don't read a fine print, each credit card has an interest rate of 25%, 30%. So when you buy something, you are going to pay back 30% more on that original cost. And that are some bad debts that we inherit into our life, especially if we are living here in America. And then we have some good debt, like your rent. Like, yeah, you owe the landlord. Every month you owe the landlord. When you pay your rent, then you pay the bill. But rent is a good debt because without it, you will have nowhere to live. And so in order for you to pay that rent each and every month, you have to find the sufficient funding to do so. Amen? And so how do you get that funding? Many of us, we go and we work. And then we have paycheck to paycheck. That's not going to help us to be debt free. Because we have no surplus. We have nothing put away. That's the type of life most of us live. The very few of us who are rich and don't have students loan, don't have to pay rent or money, have everything that they relax at home, can still be fully enclosed by debt because they have not been free from the debt of their heavenly sin. Mm. Yeah. Regardless of the debt, you hold, or the regardless of the debt, you are paid in full. You always have to give your debt over. It's hard for us to understand. How do we pay off all our debt? I mean, we could think, never get debt in the first place. But that's easier said than done. Some people don't have any choice. You know, some people don't have any choice because nobody teach them 
how to handle money successfully. Nobody teach them how to handle finance successfully. And then there are those who get deep in debt because of the consequences of their lack of trust in God. So my brothers and sisters, in order for us to become debt free, we must pay off all our debt. And especially if you're a child of God, it's one of the major requirements of the Bible. I see Proverbs chapter 37 verses 21 tells us, it says, but the godly, but the wicked, they borrow and never repay. But the godly are generous giver. To be debt free, you must pay it off, hold your debt. And know that you have someone to help you to do that. If you make that effort, if that's your goal in life, to be debt free and hurt, then you have your heavenly father to help you to accomplish that. Increase your trust in God. Trust that he is able and capable to free you from all your earthy death. Because I know the God I serve is capable of doing that. I am a testimony of someone who God can help to be debt free by paying off all my debt for me. Yes, because I know first and foremost, everything comes from God. Everything comes from God. So it doesn't matter if I go out there and work. That money that I work, that wages that I get, comes from God. Yes, because he gave me the time, the energy, and the earth to do that job. Amen? And so let's bring me to the second thing that you could do to become debt free. The second thing that you do to become debt free is don't be enslaved by money. Mm. And you may say, I am not enslaved by money. Look at that school manager. He became enslaved by money. He now has the power to anger his master money. And it seems so easy for him to just go out there and waste the money. Not knowing that he will be caught. You become enslaved by money when you spend more than you save. You become enslaved by money when you have a hard time giving it away. You become enslaved by money when you are not willing and generous with what you have. You become enslaved by money when you depend depend on money for everything mm. so ask yourself are you enslaved by money are you enslaved by money right now are you living a life that money controlled you you may feel that you are not but my brothers and sisters if you are working right now and depending on your salary to pay your rent you are enslaved by money if you believe that the food that goes on the table can only be there if you go to work you are enslaved by money so you are when you are enslaved by money how can you remove all that enslavement how can you be free from the enslavement you have to shift your trust from trusting in money to accomplish what you need to trust in god to provide all you need because the lord is your provider and he will give you everything you need when you fully trust in him when you fully know that the god you serve can give you every single thing you need and when he bless you when he pour out financial blessing on you he don't make it hard he don't make it a struggle for you he bless you and you have to be able to enjoy it but first you must seek first the kingdom of heaven and live righteously and everything will be given to you so don't be enslaved by money most of us are enslaved by money. And you know what, too? When we are enslaved by money, we are lost the way or we are supposed to spend it. We also lost the true meaning of money. What does money mean to you? Money is just something for you to trade for goods and service. But when you become enslaved by money, you become so fully dependent on money. I need money in order to buy this. I need money to order to buy that. Do you really? Because I believe that God can give you everything you need. And he's not going to pour it down from heaven. He's going to use people. He's going to use situation. He's going to allow you to show up at your mailbox with an unexpected value of $5,000 check into the mail. He can do that because he is God. But you got to shift your focus from being enslaved by money. Shift your focus to depending on God as your provider for all you need. See, my brothers and sisters, money can be both a curse and a blessing. It's a curse when we depend on it, and it's a blessing when we know the exact value it is and remember that everything comes from God. I'm going to share a story with you. 
one semester while I was in college. Um, I don't remember if it was my first or my second semester. But one semester I was in college and I was struggling. I was really struggling. That one semester I didn't even know how I was going to make it to the end of a semester because I was closely broke. I had a part-time job, but it wasn't enough for me to pay up all my bills. And um, I lived in the Bronx with my family into a small three-bedroom apartment that we changed. It was actually two-bedroom, and we changed the dining room into a third apartment, you know. And so I knew we can't afford for me to live on campus in Buffalo. But I wanted to leave that small apartment with my family and go have financial freedom and my home freedom on a college campus. How wrong I were. So that semester, I didn't know if I was going to make it through there. And so one evening, I went to... My campus crusade for Christ meeting. And I, you know, I asked for prayer. Help me to pray for me because I don't know I'm going to make it through the semester financially. And I remember the um, the chaplain there shared a scripture that we have to go to God and trust that he will provide all our need. And somehow that scripture does speak to me, you know. And even though we prayed there, when I get back to my dawn that night, I was confident that God was going to show up for me. But still... I was worried. You know, in those times you pray, but you still worried if that God is going to help. And at that time, I did not know worry was a sin. But I remember the next day, my brothers and sisters, this is my testimony. The next day, I went to uh, my mailbox to pick up my mail, thinking I was going to get a whole bunch of new bills. All right. And the huge box was there for me. I remember I was shocked. I'm like, I did not order anything. Are you sure that's for me? And my name was right there on there. And so I took the huge box and the trolley to help me to get it over to my dorm. When I got back to my room and opened that box, it was a big laundry bag. Even today, I remember that color. It was a big yellow laundry bag. To God be the glory, my church in the Bronx, the church that I used to go to in the Bronx, had sent that whole thing to me. When I opened the laundry bag, there were snack inside, there were dry snack inside, there was some canned food inside, there were supplies, you know, some supplies that I don't even use in college, but there was tons of supplies in there. And most importantly, at the bottom of that bag, to God be the glory, there was a bunch of envelopes wrapped together in a, in a rubber band. With all these various members of my Sunday school classes, I had to put Cash in there or wrote a check for me. I could not believe it. And I never forget that. God shows up for me without me doing anything but trusting in him. And it's only because that scripture came to me and said, God will provide all your need. God will provide all your need. He will give you everything you need. But we have to trust him. We have to open our eyes and see that the things in front of us in the world is not all there is. There is a power of God over our life. And he can provide everything we need when we trust him. He alone can make us completely debt free. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, even if you have the finance, even if you have the money, even you, if you have everything in life that you need, you are either free from early death, but you are not free from heaven and death. But but you can trust in God to take away both that when you trust fully in him. That was my testimony. And I have learned from that. It increased my faith to trust in God. And sometimes our faith is small because we don't get to see the power in the work of God. My faith is big because God has shows up for me in so many ways. God has allowed me to live a life that is only him I need to depend on. He is my heavenly father. He is my provider. He is my redeemer. And no matter what I go through in life, I know I can trust my God to get me through it. God has been so good to me. If I told you my story, you wouldn't believe Believe me, but I know I can trust God to make you debt free. If you believe it, you will receive it. Freedom from debt. Now, yet for all, I'm going to suggest three ways for you to be debt free. Three ways. And here is the first thing you want to do. You want to make sure that you're free from sin. Mm. And let me tell you, no matter how much money you have, you can't be free from sin on your own. You can't pay your way out 
of being free from sin. And the Bible tells us in Romans 6, verse 23, they tell us that the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is internal life to Christ Jesus. No money that you have can earn you freedom from sin because it's a free gift that comes from God that can set you free. So in order for you to be completely debt free, first make sure that you're free from sin in Jesus' name. The second thing that I want to tell you is that even if you have earthly debt into the end, when you accept Christ into your life, not only will you be free from earthly debt, but your soul will also be free and you have eternal life guarantee. The second thing, the second thing is to change your mentality. Yes. Romans 12 verses 2 said, Don't copy the behavior and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you will learn how to know God wills for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. It is not God will for you to be in debt. It is not God will for you to struggle every day. It is not God will for you to live paycheck to paycheck. But until you understand God's will for you, you can't live in a debt freedom. So you must change the way you think. And to change the way you think, meaning that you have to stop thinking the world think and start thinking the way God want you to think. Mm. Yeah. If most of your money is going to pay for bill, then you still haven't changed the way you think. But if you understand that you can save and not spend, then you will be able to experience some joy into your life. But you know, my brothers and sisters, I also think the thing that we need to do is ask yourself, what do we need and what do we want? Because we spend so much in things that we think we need. And most of those things are just things we want. Take, for example, Xbox subscription. I mean, you got to pay this premium fancy thing every month. And get thrown when you're playing a game. You got to pay for token. Or you got to buy that special, you got to buy the special tool that was so hidden that you never get until you get to the, the next level. Gee. See, you got to be a smarter game player. You got to recognize the game behind the game. And when you are living on this earth, when you are living for this world, you can't see the game behind the game. But if you change the way you think, and then you ask the Lord to show you the divine way for you to learn how to handle the money and the blessing he gives to you, then it's a whole new ball game. Mm. A third thing I want to suggest is that you start a simple saving plan. If right now you're struggling by living paycheck to paycheck and God is going to start blessing you because after this, you're going to take some step to start over, right? And so God is going to start blessing you. And once you receive his blessing, put a little bit away. You don't have to save a whole lot. $20 a week. Look at what $20 a week would be. $100 a month to a thousand dollars and to two thousand dollars. Before you know, you have a whole bunch of money in your hand. $10 a week. Put away what you can. Save what you can. And so that you can receive the blessing that God has provided for you. The Bible tells us here. It says, if you are faithful in liquor things, then you will be faithful in large one. That's verses 10. But if you are dishonest in liquor things, you won't be honest with greater responsibility. And if you're untrustworthy with worldly what? Your money. Who will trust you with the riches of heaven? We have to learn to be good stewards of our money on earth before we can be good stewards of our money in heaven. And we may not have physical money in heaven, but it's the same reward and task that God is going to place on you. And so, my brothers and sisters, we must all seek to be debt free before we reach the next life that God has for you and for me. Freedom from debt will also give you a peace of mind. It will give you better health. It will give you eternal life to Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, we all need to be debt free. Even if you're rich and have money, you still need to be free from sin. Because again, 
But the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. So, you know the Lord's Prayer? Can you honestly pray that line and say, Lord, forgive me as my debt, as I have forgiven those who are indebted to me. If you can, I'm truly happy for you that you can pray that line because it means that everyone who come to you owing something, you have given them an old chance to be free. And I'm not talking like this manager. This manager only reduced their debt, but you are taking everything away. That's why you can pray that prior in confidence, so that God can forgive you of your debt. But I am here to tell you today that it's already paid for by Christ Jesus and the cross. So you don't have to worry about the debt that you have in heaven. But God is watching how you deal with the debt that you have on earth to determine what responsibility to give to you. We all need to be free from debt. The greatest debt we carry is the debt of sin. And Christ Jesus is the only one that can free us from that. Becoming debt free is essential to our life that we will live eternally. And we can't achieve that without Christ Jesus. The debt freedom that I am talking about is not watching your credit report being clear after 14 years. No, it's a whole clean state with nothing on there. The moment that you accept Christ into your life. You see, because becoming debt free in Christ Jesus give us a new life. That means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. All the old life is gone and the new life begins. Yes. So, my brothers and sisters, do you want a new life today? Do you want to be free from all your debts? Well, I am here to tell you that becoming debt free, your first step is to invite Christ to come into your heart and live. You have to recognize the strength. You have to recognize the hold of sin on your life and be ready to be free. By asking Christ to come in. You're going to say, I recognize that I am a sinner. And I need you as my savior. And I've made that easy for you. I have given you an opportunity to accept Christ into your life today. By simple texting, save to 888-834-7008. And all things that you need will be provided for you there. Once you open that link, the first thing you're going to see is the prayer of salvation. That prayer is your commitment to Christ Jesus. It's your commitment to say, I am ready to be debt free. So I want to invite you today to invite Christ to come into your life by text and save to 888-834-7008. And if you choose to be debt free, in your heavenly realm, then God will help you for all the depths that you have on earth, no matter how high it may be, because he is the giver of all things. So invite his son to come into your life so you can first be free from a depth of sin, and then you can be free from all the earthy depth that you have accomplished on your own. I will pray for you today if you were tech safe to that number. And I pray that this sermon has blessed you. I pray that this message has given you new hope in becoming debt free into this world. And new ways to trust in God to deliver you from all pains and all struggle. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Almighty Father, I thank you so much for the message that you have given to us today. I thank you for that person who is taking safe to that number. I thank you that they are taking an effort to be free, not only from their earthly depth, but from their heavenly depth. And I ask you, O oh Father God, that in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that person who is texting safe, that you will help them to reduce all the depths that they have on earth. I pray for someone who is struggling in deep depth today. I pray that you will open their eyes that they can see that you are there to freedom eternally. We love you, Lord God. And we thank you for the love that you have given us to your son, Jesus Christ, that because of him, we can say we are your children and you are Heavenly Father, 
can free us from all debt, both heavenly and on earth. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. I thank you again for joining me for this morning service. And I pray that you will stay by and come back again at 12.45 p.m. Where I bring you the, part, the second part of this message at 12.45 p.m. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May the love of his son Jesus Christ fill you. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be with you now and forevermore. I'll see you again at 12.45. Have a blessed day.